Hey guys, it's Mikey Millions here, and if you've been following my Theta Gang videos so far, you'll notice that we've been getting into some pretty exotic option strategies. We started with the simple ones like the wheel, moved into spreads like the call credit spread, and our most recent strategy video was the multi-leg iron condor. I know there's real high demand for the poor man's covered call, but to get to that, we need to get to know the big four Greeks first. Those are Delta, Gamma, Theta, and Vega. When these guys all make sense to you, then you can start understanding leaps, poor man's covered calls, and then the real trippy stuff like the double diagonal. I'll tell you now, these concepts are complicated. This will not be a fun video. You guys know me, I'm bringing the memes, but I'm gonna lay off the jokes a little bit because I really want you to understand these concepts since there's something you're going to need in order to upgrade yourself from WSB autist to actual trader. Fortunately, you don't need a real deep understanding of the Greeks to trade these strategies. But still, if I tried to do all the Greeks in one video, it would be like 40 minutes long. You'd get bored and I would get bored. So in this video, we're going to skim the surface of Delta and Gamma to build an understanding so that we can trade the strategies I mentioned above. You won't know how to Gamma hedge by the end of this video, but you'll be prepared for the upcoming video on the poor man's covered call. We'll visit Theta and Vega in the next Greek video. This time, it's Delta and Gamma. Let's lick this lollipop. First up is the king of the Greeks, Delta. Delta is a measurement of how much an option contract's value will change whenever the underlying stock goes up or down by a dollar. Deltas are written in value, usually from theoretically 0 0.0000 all the way up to 1.0000. The closer the delta is to 1.0, the more the contract's value will change when the underlying stock moves by a dollar. I think the best way to learn how to read a delta is to look at an example. So if we look at an at the money Apple call expiring a week out, we can see the delta is 0 0.4586. Well, what does that mean? Here's the easiest way to look at delta. Take the value and cut off the last two digits since we aren't trading in fraction of a cent increments anyway. Now stick a dollar sign in front of it. The number you're looking at is the value by which your contract will change when the stock goes up or down by a dollar. This means that if we were to buy this call and Apple goes up one dollar, then the value of this call will rise by 45 cents. So for you as the buyer, you'll gain $45. Likewise, if the stock goes down by one dollar, this contract will lose 45 cents of value and you'll have lost $45. Reading Delta is just that simple but let's go a little bit further and explore some nuance. The lower the strike price on a call, the higher the delta will be. And as you get way out of the money, deltas can get very, very low. Why is that? Think of it like this. Let's say Snap is trading at $20 and you own a call at the $50 strike price expiring in two weeks. Your call strike is $30 above the market price. So you are way out of the money and on short expiration. If Snap goes from $20 to $21, your strike is still so far out of the money that the $1 increase doesn't do shit. You are still almost guaranteed that your call will expire worthless since you've still got $29 to go before this contract is worth anything. So when you go to sell this thing, don't expect anyone to get all excited that Snap went from 20 to 21 and start paying you a big premium above what you paid for it. Your delta on this contract would be something like 0 0.0005. And on the flip side, if you bought a call at the $5 strike price, the delta will be something like 0 0.9900. So if Snap goes from $20 to $21, your contract's value will go up by pretty darn close to the full dollar, which would be a $99 gain for the call holder. Now ask yourself, why is that delta so high? The reason is intrinsic value. Intrinsic value is the amount of money your contract would be worth if it were to expire right now. So if you have a call at the $5 strike on a stock that's trading for $20, your intrinsic value is $15. If expiration were to happen this second, this contract would make you eligible to buy shares $15 cheaper than what the stock is trading for on the open market right now. So if Snap goes up to 21, now you've got $16 of intrinsic value on this contract. If you're trying to sell this contract to me, I'll gladly pay more money if I'm getting guaranteed intrinsic value for every uptick in price. So this deep in the money call contract will rise quickly in value right alongside the snap stock. 
That is why in-the-money contracts have a high delta. If you're trading options that are close to the current market price, your delta will be somewhere in the middle. On some brokers, you'll see a delta of like 10.0000. What your broker is doing is adding up all of your contracts and giving you a combined delta. So if you have 20 calls and they all have a 0.5 delta, your broker is adding them all together and telling you that for every dollar of change in stock price, your total options value will go up by $10. Personally, I don't like that method, but just be aware of what's going on if you're seeing that from your broker. If all that sounded like Byzantine, just remember the fact that Delta is a measurement of how much a contract's value will change for every dollar of change in the stock's price. And remember that it gets higher the deeper in the money the contract is. Know that and you'll be fine. The next Greek walks softly but carries a big stick. It's Gamma. Gamma is the Greek that describes how much your Delta will change for every dollar of change in the stock's price. This one is a little more complicated, but we'll work through it. Like Delta, Gamma is written between 0.0000 and 1.0000, though you'll never actually see Gamma get that high. Let's look at Gamma through the same Apple example we used earlier. This Apple call has a delta at 0.44 and a gamma at 0.1. This means that if Apple were to rise by a dollar, then the delta at that next level would be 0.1 higher, or 0.54. So rather than the value of the call rising by 44 cents, if Apple were to go up yet another dollar, the call value will rise by 54 cents. And on the other hand, if Apple had gone down by a dollar, the delta at the next step would be 0.34 instead. That alone is the basis of gamma, but let's expand on how gamma functions. First thing to know, the closer your contract strike is to the current market price, the higher the gamma will be. Why? Let's use Snap again. Snap is trading for $20. You have a call at the $50 strike. We've already described why your delta is low in this situation, but your gamma will also be low since you have a long road ahead of you before that $50 strike even becomes tenable. No one cares about your $50 call when Snap goes up from 20 to 21. But when it goes from 42 to 43? Okay. Maybe this contract can become a useful financial instrument, so buyers will gain interest in the call contract. And that interest grows as the call gets closer to being at the money. And, just as importantly, as expiration approaches. Every uptick in Snap's price makes $50 more realistic, so your low gamma will start increasing as it approaches the strike price. But once Snap is above $50, and our delta is already getting up there, gamma has to start going down. Delta can't get higher than 1.0 on a single contract. So if you have a delta of 0.8, it wouldn't make sense to also have a gamma of 0.5, since delta can't become 1.3 on a single contract. Essentially, Gamma will increase when the stock approaches your strike price and decrease as it gets farther away, either too low or too high. This also begs the question, is there a Greek to measure how much my gamma will increase or decrease when the underlying stock moves? If my gamma is 0.02 when Snap is at 30, what will it be when Snap goes to 31 or 32? Is there a Greek that measures change in gamma just as how gamma measures change in delta. If you thought of this question, congratulations, you're a nerd. But yes, what you're asking for is a third order Greek called speed. Speed will tell you how much your gamma will change with respect to changes in the underlying price. But if you're stressing yourself out over the relationship between gamma and speed, you have two choices. Either one, buy and hold spy shares so you can rest at night peacefully, or two, join a quant hedge fund that celebrates things like that. There is no in-between for you. And one more thing to keep in mind, a secret Greek that can override gamma when you're getting very close to expiration, as in hours away. As a contract gets closer to expiration, the delta will get closer to 1.0 or 0.0, and that is because of a little Greek killer called charm. For our purposes, just think about charm like this. It's 3.57 p.m. on Friday. It's expiration day. Snap is trading for $20, and you own a call with a strike of $23. If you're trying to sell this call to me and Snap suddenly goes up to $21, 
Do I as a buyer give a fuck? No, of course not. The market closes in three minutes. I'm not about to fork over extra cash, hoping Snap is going to go up more than 9% in the next 180 seconds. Your delta is basically zero at this point. Charm crushed the delta on your call contract because there is no time left for it to go in the money. On the other hand, if it was Wednesday at 1 p.m. and Snap had gone from 20 to 21, sure, I'll pay a little more for that call since there is still time left for Snap to keep rising. Your delta might be something like 0.3. Charm has not crushed your delta because there is enough time left for that call to go in the money. This relationship between time to expiration and delta is called charm. Charm will crush or build your delta in those final hours before expiration, and will manhandle and manipulate your gamma to make that happen. Okay, so that was a lot. Greeks are not easy, so don't feel bad if you had a hard time with that. Check out Tastyworks, watch some more YouTube videos, maybe watch this one again if you need to. Avoid Wikipedia because it's complicated as shit and makes no sense. But learn the Greeks, and once you speak the language, you'll cut right through learning the advanced options like piss through snow. And trust me, it's worth it. I hope you guys got something out of watching this video. We are building our way up to theta farming, one step at a time. See you next time when we tackle the next few Greeks. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.